everybody, it's Al or Ariel, and I'm back for another bump date! Yay! <laughs> so, not a ton has gone on these past two weeks, I guess, but I will fill you in. I did have a midwife appointment, so I'll let you know how everything's going. So, right now, uh, so, so this is all about my week 29 and 30. I'm 31 weeks today, so that's how I'm going to be filling you guys in on all this stuff going on, and I will include a bump shot at the end of this video because I know I haven't been doing a lot of them and I like I'm sure I mean no one has mentioned it but in my own head I'm like why didn't I do a bump shot ridiculous human so anyway I always forget to do them so I will include one at the end of this video finally for you guys anyways 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 so what's going on week 29 and 30 um my pelvis is feeling a little bit better thanks everyone for the support and everything about how my pelvis I said felt like it was breaking and now it's starting to feel a little bit better which is great still doing the exercises that I was given but I haven't been great about doing them and so um I don't know if that has any effect I did go to the back to the chiropractor again and, um, and he, because originally he wanted to see me every week when things were rough, and now he's like, you can come every three weeks, that should be fine until you, like, go into labor. And so that's, I appreciate that. You're not just trying to swindle me. <laughs> um, so anyways, because they are expensive, they're like $40 copays every time I go, so it's an investment. Um, and he said that, like, the stretching I've been doing, he's like, it's good to keep doing them. He's like, but if you're not in pain and you're not, like you know, getting a ton of benefit out of them, then, like, it's really okay to, to, like, skip them every, like, you know, once in a while. He's like, if you're, if you're uncomfortable and you need to do the stretches, then do them, but he's like, but it's not gonna, like, hurt you to not do them. So I appreciate that, because I'm like, I've been so bad about doing them. Uh, but I'm still going to my aqua classes, which have been helping so much, so I appreciate that. And, uh, while my pelvis is feeling better, my tailbone is still so uncomfortable right now. So I swear I use that China gel at least like two to three times a day. And luckily it is safe during pregnancy. I checked, I checked with my midwife. Like everyone says it's fine. Um, all it is is menthol. It's not like icy hot. Like I compared it before to icy hot cause it's like kind of similar. Um, but it's just basically like menthol and just kind of like numbs your skin a little bit. Uh, I did one night when I was really uncomfortable, tried Tylenol, but it didn't really do anything. So I haven't used Tylenol since. And so I've just been using my China gel and everything's been fine. And let's see what else is going on. So I had my midwife appointment. Baby's measuring beautifully. I have been gaining weight and uh, it's like intimidating how much weight you gain at the end of your pregnancy. So that's interesting. Uh, but I'm finally like catching up and so I'm just hoping like I don't put on too much more weight. But we'll see how things go. Uh, whatever my body needs to do, it needs to do. I feel like I'm eating relatively healthy most of the time. So I'm just kind of following, you know, whatever, you know, my body wants at the moment. And just trying to, you know, avoid sugar and, like, not good things. But anyways, yeah, not perfect on my diet, but I'm striving to do okay. So I'm not super worried about it, and we'll see what happens. Because at the beginning, I was slow to gain weight. And now I'm putting on weight, and a lot of people then when they get to the last couple weeks are like also slow with weight gain. So <laughs> I'm hoping it all evens out. Anyways, midwife appointment, everything's measuring beautifully, everything's going great. Um, the baby sounds wonderful. Baby's heart rate every time I've gone has been around 155. And I've heard that if, they're have a, if they have a high heart rate, then it's a girl. But I very strongly feel like this baby's a boy. Not that I have any proof, but that's just how I feel and we'll see what happens. I'll be surprised either way. So everything's going really well there and the other thing me and my midwife talked about was red raspberry leaf tea. So I had done a lot of research about it and it's a little bit like I don't want to say it's controversial because it's not really bad for you um, but I wanted to see how important it was because as I've mentioned many times before I have severe food allergies and one of the allergies is to fresh fruits and red raspberry leaf tea sounds like something I would be allergic to. Now the caveat is I'm allergic to fresh fruits. If I cook them for long enough because my allergy is connected to this other thing called oral allergy syndrome, it's complicated, there's a video on it if you want to know. Um, but if I cook something long enough, then it's safe for me to consume. And so I wanted, so I can drink red raspberry leaf tea. It's just a process for me to make it and cook it long enough and all of that. So I wanted to ask my midwife how important she felt like it was. 
And um, so I went, so during my midwife appointment, I told her all this and I asked her, like, do you have any experience, um, like, one way or the other? Like, do you think it's, like, so important that I should bring it home and make the tea and then reboil it for, like, 40 minutes? <laughs> like, how important is this thing? And she basically, I mean, the gist was, it's pretty important. <laughs> she has had very good experiences with people um, that have had red raspberry leaf tea. And so I decided to suck it up and just do it. <laughs> and so I went back to the place where I got the yellow dock from, a place called Cambridge Naturals, which is amazing. If you guys are in the area, oh my gosh, go check it out. So cool if you're like, I don't know, into any of this stuff. I thought it was amazing. Like just jars and jars and jars of like all natural herbal remedies for super, super cheap because they're bulk. So I wound up buying like enough to make a gallon of tea, or no, enough to make two gallons of tea, and it was only like four dollars because I just had to buy the herb. I didn't buy tea bags, I bought the herb, so it was like this giant bag, and basically I just filled it up. Um, and so it was, like I said, it was very cheap because it's lightweight and it's everything's by ounce there, so it's kind of like, I feel like I'm stealing. <laughs> um, but anyways, so I got my like four dollars of red raspberry leaf tea, brought it home, and it actually tastes really good. I'm really happy with the red raspberry leaf tea. Um, the other thing funny that's been happening while I'm, well, so since I've started drinking the red raspberry leaf tea, I'm still having some Braxton Hicks, but the difference is my Braxton Hicks don't hurt the days that I drink the tea. Really funny. It's almost like my uterus is working itself out, but it's not like overdoing it. I don't know. I don't know. It's the experience I've had. Like the days that I forget to drink it, I sometimes will have painful Braxton Hicks, but the days that I do drink it, I don't. So I don't know if there's anything to this, but I'm giving it a try. Because the other thing is that there's lots of iron and other good stuff in red raspberry leaf tea, so it's kind of one of those like why not situations. So I've been doing that. The way that I make it is I make huge quantities at a time because it's so much effort for me to do it. And she said to drink two to four cups a day. So I've been doing, so what I do is I figured it out for those that are curious and want to do a big batch like I've been doing. I do a double concentrate. So I looked up like the measurements and stuff online, concentrates online. So I do double concentrate so I only have to have two cups a day. And then I dilute it with like cranberry juice or whatever. And um, cause I've also been drinking lots of juice and, or cranberry juice, whatever. So sometimes I just dilute it with water, but I do a double um, a double concentration, so that is, so I do it with one gallon of water, which is 16 cups, and I do two cups of the tea, that's the equivalent, so two cups of the loose powder, or pow like the loose leaves, and one gallon of water. And I boil the water, put the tea leaves in, stir it, and then it, it turn off the heat, let it steep for 15 minutes, and then I drain the tea, and then just the the tea itself, like not the leaves, I put back on the stove and boil for another half an, half an hour. Because for me to make sure that it's safe for me to drink or anything to consume that has fruit, I have to cook it for 45 minutes. So that's the way I do it. Obviously, if you don't have oral allergy syndrome, you don't have to do that. Just do the 15 minutes deep and you should be fine. Um, and I think it tastes really good. There was one time, so I've been doing it for like, I don't know, a week and a half now. And... Um, you know, the 16 cups, you know, if I have two cups of that a day, then that lasts me eight days. So I've only had to rebrew once so far. <laughs> and, and the second time, unfortunately, I rebrewed it. I think I burned it a little bit, if that makes sense. It kind of had a little bit of a more bitter taste. And it tasted a little bit kind of like burned coffee. So it's not super bad. It's just more bitter. So the first time I made it around, it was like delicious just plain as is, and now this time around it's a little bit better and I really have to add a little bit of juice to it to make it palatable, but it's not super bad. It was way better than the yellow dock tea. The yellow dock tea was whoa, super bitter. Effective, but super bitter. <laughs> um, so that's what's going on this week. That's my experience with red raspberry leaf tea. I'll let you know if there's any other updates along those lines. Um, I wonder how my labor will go with this whole red raspberry leaf tea tea leaf thing. <laughs> um, but that's it for now, guys. And let me know how you guys are doing. And don't forget to make your official guess on our baby's gender. And that is at, I think it's called hunch.com or something. The link is right down below. So go ahead and check that out. But that's it for now, guys. And if you like, subscribe. Bye.